what we looked at last last module, not just last class. Okay. What did we uh, What did we talk about? <coughs> what did we start with? No, no, last module, not just the last lecture. Right. We looked at what are vectors and then some operations are vectors. What operation? We looked at two of them. And addition and then What are vector spaces? Okay. Right, that's closed under scalar addition. Uh, uh, sorry, scalar multiplication and addition. Okay, all right. Um, and then? Subspace. What are subspaces? Right. It's a subset of a vector space. Right, and that's also, uh, and that is a vector space in itself. Okay, and then, right, what is linear independence? No, what is linear independence? That's the detail. Right, it is a property of? No, a set of vectors. Okay, and what is that property? So, if you have a set of vectors. Uh huh. Okay. If you take the okay, all right. Uh, if you take a linear combination of these, it should not produce a vector in the set. Okay. Right. That's correct. Uh, what is the general way of expressing that idea? If you have this, only if all alpha i is zero, e even if one is not zero, then this is a linearly dependent set. Okay, um, right? And then, okay. We, let's look at basis. Even before that, that's right. Span of what is span? Right. Set of all linear combinations of the elements of the set S. Okay. Then standard order product. What is the standard order? No, no. What is the standard order product? Here again, we are assuming x and y are from R n. What is this equal to? Okay. Uh, what is the geometric interpretation of the inner product? We talked about this, right? Right. It's some sort of a measure of uh, the projection of one vector onto another, okay, but we will make that idea more concrete later on uh, when we talk about orthogonality. Okay. Then, what is the norm? Yeah, measure of uh, the length of a vector. How do we measure norm in Rn? Is there one particular way of measuring norm? Right, it's a distance measure or uh, distance of or uh, length of a vector. Right, but in general, what property should have? Uh, see, another way to think about this is the standard product is a, is a function 
that takes two if you say standard error product it takes two inputs x bar takes two vectors and then produces a real number okay what about the norm the norm is also a function what does, what input does it take how many inputs does it take it takes one vector as an input and what does it produce it's uh, it's not just a real number but it has to be greater than or equal to zero this is the norm okay any okay now not any function that does this type of a mapping will can be a suitable norm there are some properties that the norm has to satisfy what are those there are i think four properties right what is definiteness should always be greater than equal to zero when is it equal to zero in the when the vector itself is the zero vector okay yeah that's this right ah sorry definiteness is this non negative is this there is also one more if you have uh, alpha squared then you get if you scale the vector the norm gets scaled and then you have the triangle inequality okay so we, any function that satisfies these four properties is a valid norm okay and then we looked at the p norms right what is the p norm definition of a p norm for a vector in rn yeah see these are all things you should you should already remember yeah what is the definition it's simply sum of xi power p okay and then we saw x1 x2 and p is a positive integer okay. and there is also the infinity norm okay all right and then what did we see after this what is this no what what is it in 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 layman's terms yeah this is the property of two vectors being perpendicular to each other you have two vectors x uh, y you say they are orthogonal to each other or you write x perpendicular y if and only if so whenever i write i f it means if and only if okay the standard in the product is zero okay all right and then basis right what is the basis okay it's a set of vectors right a set of vectors that is and the set is linearly independent right okay usually when you say basis now you say basis of a vector space okay so when i is this is basis of let's say v v is a vector space okay that set of vectors so it's a set of vectors that is linearly dependent and it spans what now if it's a basis for v what does it span spans v okay all right right and then we talked about the normal basis what is this let's say it's a orth orthonormal basis for v it's a basis but additionally no right but what is the property of an orthonormal basis it's one the unit length and they are all uh, mutually orthogonal okay uh, an orthonormal basis vectors are uh, nice because it's easy to find the expansion of any vector y in the orthonormal basis uh, yeah if you know the basis vectors and the vector that you that you are interested in y okay yeah i'm mentioning of vector space v what is this it is the number of 
it is a property of the vector space and it is equal to number of what number of vectors in a basis for v yeah okay and then okay what are the last what is the linear function Right. So we're looking at functions that map from R into R, and when when is this function linear? What does it mean? Let's say it gives you f x one. If you do alpha. And this is if this is true for all x one x two from R n, and for all alpha and beta from R, and this is satisfied, then you say the function f is linear. And any linear function can be expressed as what? If f of x is a linear function, then this can be written as where w is a fixed vector that belongs to R n. Okay. Right. So this is what we looked at in the first uh, first module. And these are all things you have to remember, okay? And and remember and understand, okay? So now we'll move on to the next module. Which is on uh, matrices, okay? Yes, I'll write. Okay. Now we move on to the next topic. Okay. See, last module we started by uh, looking at vectors, and we said. Uh, vectors are, uh, or n vectors are a list of n uh, numbers. Matrices is similar, except these are a rectangular arrangement of numbers. Okay. Right. Whenever you have, uh, if you have a rectangular arrangement of numbers, this is called a matrix. Okay. And uh, when you have a matrix, uh, the horizontal Uh, arrangements. These are called. What are these called? These are called rows, and these are called columns. Okay. How many rows and columns does this matrix have? This has two rows, and then three columns. Uh, counting or indexing of the rows starts from the top. The very first row is row one, row two, row uh, row, uh, row three, and so on and so forth. The Uh, column or the leftmost column is the first column, and then uh, the index for the columns increases from left to right. Okay. Now, because I said it's a rectangular arrangement, uh, right? You could have an arrangement like this. You could have an arrangement of numbers like this, or you could have an arrangement where arrangement like this. Here. The number of rows is lower than the number of columns. The more columns here, the more rows, and this would be called. Or we would refer to this as either a fat matrix or a, a wide matrix. Okay. So when I say fat matrix, you you know what I'm talking about. The number of columns is more than number of rows. On the other way round. Uh, on the other hand, if you have, if the number of rows are more than the number of columns, then this would be called a Skinny matrix or or a tall matrix. Okay. If the number of rows and number of columns are the same, uh, let's say this is n. Let's say the number of rows is n, number of columns is n. Here, n is less than n. Here, n is greater than m. Here, n is equal to m. And these are called Square matrices. Okay. Right. <coughs> See now these numbers that you have. They can be real numbers, integers, uh, complex numbers, whatever you want. Okay, depending on uh, the application that you're dealing with.
Okay. Now, if that is the case, uh, in in the last module we always uh, say, uh, we started with vectors. I mean, we started with vectors as set of n numbers, and then later on we kind of looked at more generalized examples of uh, vectors, where we said a polynomial of finite uh, uh, order is is a vector, a set of all polynomials like that, uh, set of uh, finite duration uh, signal time domain signals are vectors, and so on and so forth. So when we talked about n vectors, right? We said it's a it's a set of numbers like this, uh, with x one, x two, x n, where e each of these are uh, numbers. Let's say let's say real numbers. Now we can also think of this. For example, this fits in the picture of a rectangular arrangement of numbers. So this vector is also a matrix, right? Except the the number of columns here is one. Okay, so whenever you have a situation like this, where the number of columns in a matrix is one, uh, a vector like this is usually called a column vector. Okay, that means now uh, instead of writing it vertically, if you write the numbers horizontally, then what would this be called? This would be called a row vector, where here uh, the number of rows is one. Okay. Now, if you remember when we talked about n vectors, right? Let's see, all the elements of the n vector come from uh, uh, real numbers. Okay, and we said these n vectors are elements of a set like this, R n. This simply means n real numbers. Okay. For matrices, you use a similar rotation. Uh, if you have a matrix with n rows, n columns, how many how many numbers do we have in the matrix? No, how many num? So, if you have n rows and m columns, how many individual scalars do we have in the matrix? And then, right? So, one way to think about that is simply as a nm vector, a vector with nm elements, right? So you could say a matrix uh, like that with n rows and m columns is an element of m. Okay. Now, I could have written it like this: nm, where nm is the product of the number n and m. But usually, we write it as n times m. And this means uh, it's a set of n numbers, n -num real numbers, which are arranged in n rows and n columns. Okay, so whenever you see this, you know that this is a set of matrices with n rows and n columns, where and the individual elements of the matrix are uh, are real numbers. Okay, now if you have uh, us, if you had a square, a two cross two square matrix, where each element is a complex number. Then all such matrices would be elements from uh, C two cross two space. Okay. Right. Now, again, earlier if you had a vector like this, n vector, the individual elements are indexed by uh, by uh, these numbers one, two, three, uh, four, five up to n. We follow a similar convention with matrices, where the i j element. Let's say this is the i row, and this is the j column. Uh, this, let's say, this is a matrix A, and in the slides, uh, in the slides, uh, I will always use capital letters in bold face, and those mean that we are dealing with a matrix. Okay, and if you remember for vectors, it was uh, small case, but bold letters represented vectors. The ijth element is usually written as a scalar, a small, a lowercase letter, no bold, regular lowercase letter, and it's indexed using two numbers, i and j. Where the first number is always the row number, and the second number is always the column number. Okay. So what? Let's say if this is a. Okay. 
what is a to 1? 4. That means uh, the element on the second row and first column. What about a to 3? 2, a 1, 3, minus 1. What about a 4, 1? No, it does not make sense because it's this does not exist. This is this is a two cross three matrix. Okay. Now, if you have uh, an arrangement of uh, numbers like that, right? It turns out that we are not. I mean, of course, we are. I mean, let's say you have an application where you have a huge array of numbers. But sometimes we might want to write this matrix not as just, uh, I mean, we might not be interested in the exact numbers there are. It's possible or it is often, it, it often happens that when you have a matrix like this, you might want to subdivide this matrix. Okay? And instead of worrying about what the individual numbers are, you might want to look at the, this subdivided matrix into, uh, into individual matrices themselves that are put together in the rectangular arrangement. Okay? Uh, and these are called block matrices. And, and block matrices usually are written like, let's say I have a matrix A. You have, okay? where the individual elements, or the way it's written here, the individual elements of A are not scalars like what we saw there, but these are themselves matrices. Okay, uh, but you can't write. But these can't be any matrix that you want. There are some conditions that matrices B and C, B and D have to satisfy. Similarly, D and E and uh, E and C have to satisfy for you to be able to write a matrix in a block matrix form. Okay. Uh, the condition is this. Okay. The block matrices that are there in a row, all of them would have to have the same number of rows. So B and C cannot have two different rows. Okay. Similarly, the matrices, the block matrices that are there in, uh, sorry, I should not say block matrices. The matrices that are there in this block matrix A in a column should all have the same number of columns. Okay. Now, <coughs> for example, I have to write a matrix like this. I can write this in a block matrix form. Let's say this 2 cross 2 has some meaning to me. This uh, uh, 2 cross 1 has some meaning. This 1 cross 2 has some meaning. And this 1 cross 1 has some meaning. I would be able to write this as, let's say I call this B, C, D, E. And B would be 1, 2, 4, 2. C would be minus 1, 0. D would be 11, 1. And your E would simply be a one cross one matrix, which is simply a scalar. Okay, you can't have stuff like this. You can't say uh, this is my B, this is my C, this is my E, my D. Okay, well, you can uh, uh, you can still think of it like this, but you can't do any useful operations. Uh, if you define block matrices like this, okay, it turns out if you define it like this. Um, many operations that we do uh, with matrices like this, which, where we write down the individual elements, nicely generalized to block matrices as well. But if you write it like this, there is there is no guarantee that uh, any of that any of those things will work. That's that's the reason why when you write block matrices like this, there are some there are the, these conditions that the individual block matrices have to satisfy. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> <clears throat> now, like uh, we saw last time, uh, there were some special vectors that we looked at, right? Uh, for whom we had, for uh, for whom we had specific names, like the unit vector, zero vector, one vector, and so on. So there are similarly uh, matrices like this that are uh, 
that have special names. So you have zero matrix. <coughs> and again, it's written zero, uh, written zero block <coughs> bold zero. <coughs> and usually you'll see a subscri uh, subscript like this. And that, that simply means that it's a matrix, it's an n cross m matrix whose elements are all zero. Okay, so that's a useful matrix. And then another useful matrix is is what is called the identity matrix. Okay, identity matrix matrices uh, are usually written like this: I n. There is only one number in the subscript because they are square matrices, so you don't uh, have to write n cross n. And they have this nice property. Okay, the individual elements of this matrix are all zero, except when you have uh, what are called diagonal elements. Diagonal elements are elements where their the row index and the column index are the same. In the case of uh, uh, identity matrix, all the diagonal elements are 1 and every other element is 0. Okay. Now, before we proceed, right? Now, if you, we said we can write matrices as block matrices, right? It means if I have a matrix like this. ways to think, uh, I mean, two common ways of thinking of this matrix as a block matrix is to simply write this as a block matrix with three column vectors or a block matrix with two row vectors. Okay? So, for example, here I could write it as A1, A2, A3 and what would be A1 here? A1, 4, A2, 2, 5, A3 would be 3, 6. Okay. I can also write it as a uh, as a block matrix with two row vectors. Okay. And the convention we will follow is for us. Uh, uh, when we were talking about n vectors, we always express them as column vectors. So, whenever we say a vector, by default, we will assume we are talking about a column vector. We always write it as a column. Okay. Um, so, if we were to write this uh, as a set of rows, row vectors, we will uh, we'll always follow this convention. So, if you have a matrix A, okay, if you see small letter with an underscore or bold small case letter with an i, that means that is the ith column of the matrix A. Okay. If we are talking about the row of this matrix, we will always write it like this, A1, okay. whenever you see the tilde sign, that means I am talking about a row of a matrix. And we use the transpose symbol to indicate that it is a row, okay? Because a one tilde is a vector, and that is a vector is always a column vector for us. If I say transpose, then okay, even though I have not defined what transpose is, but everybody knows what a transpose is, okay? So what would be a one tilde now? Notice I'm I'm not using a transpose. That means this I am calling what talking about a column vector. What would this be? Ah, would it be one four? So a one tilde transpose is the first row. Yeah, if I don't do the transpose, then it's simply one two three. Because if I take the transpose, then that fits in here. That's that's this. Okay, and what would be a two tilde transpose? How like this? So. 
This is just the convention we follow. Okay. You might not see other people do this. Uh, uh, Stephen Boyd uses the same uh, convention which I like, so I, 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 I keep this convention. It's easy to uh, work with. Okay, all right. Right, before we proceed, right, if I have a matrix n cross n, okay, how many column vectors does this matrix have? n or m? m column vectors, okay. Where is the, so that is a i, right. Where are the individual column vectors from? Which space are they from? Do you understand the question? Okay. Let's let's say we have a matrix of real numbers, n cross m matrices. Okay, that means n rows, n columns. I am I was asking you how many column vectors if A were to be expressed as a block matrix, how many element how many column vectors does A have? M column vectors, because there are n columns. Where are those individual columns from bit space? The matrix itself is from R n cross m, but where are the individual columns from? Is it Rn? Okay, let's take an example. Same. This is three cross two, two cross three, two cross three, and this is a one, a two, a three. Where is where are these AIs from? Which space? R. R2, right? These are the columns, but the number of elements is the co in the column is the number of rows. Okay. What about you know what I'm going to ask you? How many row vectors does this have? N row vectors, and where are these from? R M or N. So, this is R N. Yeah. Okay. This you have to remember. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's because uh, whenever we say vector, we will assume by uh, by default that it's a column vector. I am simply saying the row is simply a transpose of a vector because ve vector for us is a column vector. Yeah? Because otherwise, if I tell you a vector and it could be it could mean both a row vector or a column vector, then I would have to follow a convention like this. If I say A is a vector and I say it belongs to Rn, you have no idea whether this is a row vector or a column vector. So, if you have a matrix A, you don't know if uh, let's say I'll call it X. If this is permitted, or if this is permitted, okay, we'll come to matrix multiplication. This is not clear. Okay, to make it clear, whenever I talk about a vector, I have to then talk about x is a vector that is from n cross one, or I have to say this becomes tedious. Okay, so to avoid that confusion, we say okay, whenever we say a vector, it will always be a column vector. That means it will always be from this is assumed, it is from n cross 1. That means now if you want to express row vectors, you simply use a transpose. Okay? Now, in the matrix, we if A is the uh, symbol for capital A is the symbol for this matrix, then small a we reserve it for the columns. Okay? So you have to now have something for the rows. So A tilde A. Whenever you say small letter corresponding to the same letter as the matrix, and there is a tilde, that means it's we're talking about the rows, and we take the transpose because all vectors for us are column vectors. Yeah. Okay. Now, uh, 
uh, we will again talk about two. Uh, initially, we will talk about two operations. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Uh, that to RM. Uh, already, M is the number of columns. Right? M is the number of columns. Is it clear or is it silk? Yes. Uh, we divided this matrix or we wrote this matrix as a block matrix and individual elements are block. Why do I not use the tilde? So, are you asking why Why did I not choose tilde here and no tilde here? Is this a convention? No? Oh, this I, I remember I, I said last time. In in the slide, I can, it's easy for me to show a bold letter. When writing here on the board, I cannot write like this every time. So instead of that, I said I am going to put, put an underscore. Whenever you see an underscore, I am really talking about a vector. Yeah? Is that clear or no? Oh, no, no, sorry, okay. Whenever we say vector, it is always a column vector. Okay? This is convoluted. A tilde is a column vector corresponding to the row of a matrix. Okay? To show that it is a row, we use the transpose. Okay? All right. we'll, you can do scalar multiplication. The idea is very simple. So, if you have a matrix A that is n cross n, okay, you can multiply this matrix by a scalar A, okay, and that matrix will simply be equal to the original matrix where the individual elements are all multiplied by alpha. So, if A ij was the ij element of A, then uh, the corresponding element of alpha times a will be alpha ij, okay, just as what we had in the case of n vectors. And then we can also define a matrix addition operation. Here we need two matrices, a and b, and both of them have to be from the same space. Okay. Now, if a ij are the elements of the A matrix, uh, B, I, J are the elements of the B matrix, then again, I am using abusing notation again, the I, J the element of the matrix A plus B is simply, okay, you simply add the individual elements, yeah, is it clear? Let's just do an example. What would this be? Okay. You simply add the individual elements 3, 0, 2, 12, 2, 6. Okay. If I were to multiply this by 3, just this matrix, then this would simply be 3, 0 minus 3, 3, 3, 3. Now, here is a strange, uh, maybe not that strange, or interesting observation. If you take a matrix A, n cross n matrix, if you do scalar multiplication, what matrix do you get in return? What size matrix? What is the size of matrix? n cross n. That means the set of n cross n vectors is closed under scalar multiplication. Okay? Similarly, if you 
take two two matrices from n cross m uh, from the space R n cross m. If you add them together, you again get a n cross m vector or sorry n cross m matrix. That means uh, this is also closed under vector addition. What does it say about the space n cross m? It is a vector space. Okay, that means matrices are vectors. Okay, uh, because vector is not just this uh, n uh, num uh, set of n numbers. Vector is a more general uh, concept. Matrices are also vectors. Okay. What's happening here? Yeah, I okay. I forgot to mention a couple of uh, other matrices, but we will do that now. Okay. This special set of matrices diagonal. These are these are square matrices, okay? And these are called diagonal matrices because all the elements of this matrix are zero except for the ones on the on the diagonal, okay? And the diagonal elements are the elements where the row index and the column index are the same. Sometimes you might find people calling this the main diagonal because these are called the off diagonal. Let's not worry. When I in this course, at least, if we talk about diagonal, then we are talking about the main diagonal. Okay. If all of these are zero, what would this matrix become? If all the diagonal elements are zero, it will simply become the zero matrix n cross n zero, uh, zero matrix. Okay. If at least one of them is not zero, then then it remains the diagonal matrix. And then another useful uh, set of matrices are called triangular matrices okay these are again uh, square matrices okay and there are two types of triangular matrices uh, upper upper triangular or lower triangular Upper triangular matrices are matrices where the elements below the diagonal are all zero. Lower triangular are, ele are matrices where elements above are zero. The reason, I mean, these these have special names is because matrices like this come up in applications often. So people have found that it's useful to have uh, uh, at least give these matrices special names because we will often deal with them. Oh, in terms of signals, is it? What do you mean? When you say real world vectors, are you talking about what does it mean in terms of the column vectors? Yeah, for example, the diagonal matrix that you can something from a column. Ah, okay. Sure, we will come to that. See, and another thing you should notice is in an identity matrix, right? Okay, let's let's say I two. What are the columns of I two? No, what are the columns? There are two columns. What are the columns? Okay. Have we seen vectors like this before? What are these? These are the unit vectors. Remember? Okay. So in case, in case, I mean, in the in the general case where you have i n, 
how many columns does this matrix have? N and the columns are nothing but what about the rows? Rows of this matrix. Number of rows is equal to the number of columns. I am asking what are the specific rows of this matrix? Yeah, yeah, those are also unit vectors. Yeah, because here this is E1 in R2. The first row is also E1, except it is written as a row vector. Okay, this is also E1. Okay, yeah, just an interesting observation. This again, the reason I, I wrote it again is because uh, Devakar brought it up. Uh, we will see what this means later on. <clears throat> okay, we will now talk about transfers, the transfers operation, but you already know what the transfers operation is. Transpose of a matrix. This is simply an operation where you switch the rows and columns. Now, if you have a matrix A from R n cross m, the transpose operation will see, if you take the transpose of this matrix, you will get a matrix which is represented by A. And what space is this matrix from? This will be sorry, M. This will be from M cross N. Okay. And if the ij element, for example, let us take an example 1, 3, 0, 2, 4, 1. If this is A, what will be A transpose? What will be the first row? Okay, this is 2 cross 3, this is 3 cross 2. Okay. Okay. This is simple enough. Okay. What about if I have a matrix A? that is a block matrix. The question is, if I, I mean of course again this is, uh, let us say this is again from n cross m. Of course I can take the transpose of this matrix using the individual elements, I can transpose them like this. Can I, now the question is because I have written down this particular matrix as a block matrix, can I write down the transpose of this matrix? in a block matrix form in terms of these four matrices. Okay. So would it be like this? Exchange it how? So this becomes V transpose, is that right? Okay. 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 I don't know if this is correct. For this to be correct, for you to write it like this, you remember the rules for writing block matrices? What are the rules? Columns are what? Same. Okay. The what is the corresponding rule for this and is that satisfied here? What should we say? Yeah. Hold on. Columns of what? Right. You are saying, okay, columns of B transpose and C transpose has to be same. But all we know is the rows of B and C are the same. Does that mean the columns of B and B transpose and C transpose are the same? We, we do know, right? Yeah. If the rows are the same, the columns of the individual transposes would be same because columns become rows. Yeah. So this is satisfied. This is okay. But let's just verify that with an example, and then and then everything is clear. B 
again, it's just easy for me to write it like this, so it's fine. Okay, let's see, this is how I'm splitting my four matrices. This is B, C, D, G. E. What is the transpose of this? No, but let's uh, write in terms of the elements. So it will be 1, 4, 7. Okay. Now let's see if, if that makes sense. You see, first is B transpose. B transpose should be 1, 2. Okay, that's here. The second one should be D transpose. D is 4, 7, 5, 8. 4, 7, 5, 8. So, this is okay. So, this is B transpose. B transpose. Uh, this should be C transpose. Transpose of C is the same because it's got one element. So, this is C transpose. And then the last one is E transpose 6, 9, 6, 9. So, this is E transpose. Yeah, is it clear? Yeah. So, that is how you take the transpose of a block matrix and express a transpose in terms of the individual uh, elements of the block, block matrix. Right. See, when we started talking about uh, vectors, we, we talked about two uh, operations, scaling and vector addition. We did not really talk about a matrix multiplication operation except for the standard inner product. Okay. But it turns out in terms for matrices, we will we'll later on see the standard inner product is in fact a matrix multiplication operation. So, it turns out there is a multiplication operation that is very useful. And getting a good understanding of this is is vital to understand the rest of uh, what what we'll cover the rest of linear algebra. Okay, so it does. Uh, uh, it turns out uh, you can multiply two matrices, but there is some space, uh, uh, or the multiplication operation is a little weird at first. Okay, so the rules are: so you can multiply two matrices, but uh, the matrices that you want to multiply have to satisfy some properties. Let's say you want to multiply two matrices A and B. Okay. The matrix multiplication uh, is defined only if, let's say, uh, these uh, two matrices are from N1 cross M1, and this is from N2 cross M2. For you to do matrix multiplication between these two, the condition that needs to be satisfied is uh, okay. And let's say you want to do a matrix multiplication operation like this, which produces another matrix C. A first followed by B, because it turns out matrix multiplication is not committed, you cannot switch. Okay. For you to carry out a multiplication operation like this, the condition that needs to be satisfied is M1 to M2. Okay, for now, just remember. Okay, it simply means whenever so whenever you write a set of matrices like this, okay, the interface between two matrices, okay, there needs to be a particular condition that needs to be satisfied. Okay, that condition is the number of rows on the. I'm always confused on the right. Okay, here should be equal to number of columns on the left of the. Of this dashed line. Okay, that is that is essentially this condition. That means let me rewrite this. So let's say this is n cross p, p cross n. I am allowed to multiply these two. This is multiply these two matrices like this. Okay, and the resulting matrix will have will be of uh, will be from R n cross n. Okay, whereas A was from n cross p, b was from p cross m, okay, 
So the resulting matrix, the number of rows will be equal to the number of rows of A, the number of columns of the resulting matrix C will be equal to the number of columns of B. Okay. But don't just remember these. Later on, we'll see why. Uh, later on, we'll see why it is like this, and it will make perfect sense. Okay. And we'll simply. I'll simply write down the expression for the ij element of the matrix C in terms of the elements of A and B. The the definition for matrix multiplication. The ij element is simply the summation over k mon to p okay, a i k into b k j okay, where i goes from 1 to n, j goes from 1 to m. Okay. So now just remember this. Alright, with this in mind, we will now first look at um, post multiplying a matrix A by a column vector. Let's say we have a matrix A <coughs> in cross M. Okay. We have this matrix and then we multiply this by a vector, column vector. Okay. For us to be able to multiply this by a column vector and apply this rule of matrix multiplication, what space should X be from? Rm or Rn? Rm. Okay. Because it is a column matrix, I can simply write it as this. These two match, like here. Okay, so this is a, this is we are allowed to do this. If I multiply this, what do I get as the result? R n, I will get a vector from R n, will it be R 1 cross n or n cross 1? So, I will get a vector 1, I will get some like something like this and that will be from R n and it turns out it will be from R n cross 1. So, it will be a column vector as well. So, if you take a matrix and you post multiply, post means something that comes to the right of the matrix. If you post multiply by a column vector, the resultant is always a column vector. Okay, all right. Now, let's um, okay. Let's do a numerical example first, and then we'll uh, do a more generalized example. Okay. If I multiply these two, what do I get as my output? What will be the first element? What will be the second element? All you have to do is apply this formula. Yeah. That's wrong. Yes, good. What is C? Well, IJ, J is always 1. What is C1? 2 is it? Why is it? Why is it 2? So, it will be A11 into AB or X1. Uh, this will be 1 into 1 plus 1, 0. So, that is 2. 2 minus 1 plus 0. Okay. Okay. Now that you have, have it, let's write this down. If you have a general expression like this, A11, in fact, I'll just do a 2 cross 2. 
just to make it keep it simple. Okay, I multiply this by a vector from R two. What will I get? What will be the resultant? Okay, a one one x one plus x one. Okay, that's the vector. Okay, now because there is this plus sign in the middle, right? Can I write this vector like this as the sum of this vector? Just this vector, and I replace this by. Right? That's that's simple rule of vector addition. I can do that. Right? That's okay. No? Okay. Now look at this one. So both these have x one as common. Right? That is as if the uh, I take this vector a one one a two one and multiply it by a scalar x one. Right? That means I can take this out. <laughs> So, so I can I can take that x one out and then put it here, right? Because x one is a scalar. I can do the same thing here, right? I can take the x twos out. What has just happened? This matrix multiplication operation has turned into something that we are familiar with. What is this? It's a linear combination. Linear combination of what? No, no. Linear combinations of what? Yeah, exactly. What is this? That is the first column of A, right? What is this? And all we've done is. Take x one times the first column, x two times the second column, and there is this. Okay, so it turns out that whenever you post multiply a matrix by a vector, all you're doing is you're taking the linear combinations or combination of the columns of A and the exact coefficients for the linear combination or the uh, mix. Uh, coefficients for the linear combination come from the vector x. The role of the vector x is to tell you how to mix the columns of A to produce an output vector y. Okay, so it's uh, one way to think about lean, to think about linear combination is you are mixing the columns of A and the exact amount uh, of this mixture for the individual columns comes from x. Okay, that is this is a very important point to know. What it means to post multiply a matrix by by a vector, yeah. So in the general case, if this is a matrix from n cross m, this is a matrix from uh, r. This is a vector from R m. My vector y is nothing but x one times the first column of A, where where A. A one, A two, A M, right? Okay, x one times A one, x two times A two, x M times. Okay, that is the interpretation of post multiplying a matrix by a column vector. I'll take this out. Now, now you know what I'm going to talk about next. What do you think I'm going to say? Pre-multiplying by what? By a row. Okay. So, pre-multiply by a Row. Okay. Again, we have matrix A, n cross n, 
we have a vector x from R m. Okay. Now I ask, I take the matrix A and then I multiply by transpose. What do I get? First of all, is it am I allowed to do this? Oh, because so here I talked about post multiplying. That means placing uh, uh, the multiplicand on the right of A. Here I'm asking. I'm going to place something on the left. But first, look. look let's look at this. Okay, you're right. Can I do this? Why not? What is the size of this? These two do not match. That means you cannot. This is, it's not defined. Okay, so that does not work. What else can I do? We try this. Is that okay? Okay. What is this? This is one one cross m. Hold on. What? That does not work. X transpose A transpose. Is it? Ah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Or I mean, I don't have to take it from M. I'll take it from N. Okay. Then this is okay. Now, what I will get? What will I get? Will I get a row vector or a column vector? Don't guess. You have to tell me the exact answer. So I'll get something. Will it be a row vector or a column vector? Yes. Again, I put the transpose because for us vectors are always column vectors. See, if we had not followed that convention, this would be extremely confusing. That's why I think uh, talking about vectors as uh, column vectors and using transposes to express rows makes it very clear. Okay. Now, use the same example. And then tell me uh, what is y transpose. Now, there are two ways to write this a1, a2, or okay. it turns out for this, this is more useful. Start with that and then see. I mean, you can't start do something similar to this. So you take some. Now you are multiplying by x one, x two because this is x x transpose. And tell me what is y in terms of the rows of a. What is the first element? Maybe you can tell me that. X one A one one. A one two is it? Okay. That's the first element. And the second element? Okay. Now, can we write it like this? It, it's the sum of two row, vec uh, row vectors, like in that, uh, which have these two terms and these two terms. Yeah, I can write this as x one a one one, x one a one two, 
plus x2 a to 1 x2 right if you add these two you would get this right now x1 is common in both of these so i can remove this and simply take it out similarly here what is this what is this in terms of a it's the first row there is some, this is nothing but x1 a1 till the suppose plus x2 okay what is the interpretation of this now pre multiplying the matrix by a row vector so okay it's like so when you pre multiply a matrix by a row vector what are you doing you are taking the linear combination of the rows of a and how much of each row you take comes from the elements of x so you are mixing the rows of a and the amount of mixture for each of the rows comes from your from comes from the vector x is that clear now in the in the general case you can express it like this y will simply be x1 times a1 till a transpose plus x2 x n a n a not a, will it be a n a n remember here it is m is that okay all right this is all i wanted to cover for today are there any questions about what we've discussed so far see matrix multiplication is absolutely vital so you you really have to be very very comfortable with this material to go forward okay um uh, yeah by the time we are done with the first two modules you have to be very thorough with those two then the rest of the material becomes relatively easy to assimilate otherwise it's a, it's a real fight okay all right if there are no questions we'll stop here right. thank you